Hey, what's up guys? Welcome, I'm OG Duffy, and we've got another Versus video. Yes, now, this one is something slightly different for me, because it's a game I'm not that familiar with. Okay, this has been requested, a couple of you guys have suggested I do this as a Versus video, so... Who am I to ignore you guys' requests, okay? Of course, I'm going to look into it. So the game we're looking at today is Carnov, okay? Now, this was released in the arcades back in 1987 by Data East. Now, I am aware of the game, and it's a title I've always known and heard, etc. But I've never played it. I've never played it on the arcade. I've never played it on the Commodore 64 version or the ZX Spectrum version, which is uh, the two versions that are competing in our Versus video today. Uh, so... This is quite a good one for me, so I'm coming to this completely blinkered, completely blind, and we're going to see how this comes across. So I'm going to obviously have a look in at the arcade version first, as I always do, and then I'm going to compare the two versions, the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. Now, it's going to be quite an interesting one. Let's see how Karnov uh, measures up, shall we? So in a nutshell, the game is um, uh, over nine levels, and it's sort of a bit platformy, bit shooty, bit that sort of thing uh, and it's a quest for treasure yes treasure the gold stuff but not just any treasure mine the ultimate treasure now we'll find out if it makes it but nine levels is it a toughie we don't know but we're about to find out now this game features some very weird sounding enemies i mean uh, hearing about them some of them include dinosaurs ostrich riding skeletons Yes, you heard me correctly. And uh, not forgetting, of course, centipede women. Yes, you heard me correctly. Centipede women are one of the, uh, the, the enemies in the game, all leading to the final boss, which, of course, is the wizard. Yes, a wizard. Anyway, without further ado, let's go take a look now at Karnov, the arcade version. Here we go. So this is Karnov, the arcade version. I always start off showing the arcade version. Um, quite cutesy, nice bright graphics. Um, a bit of a sort of a shoot em up here, as you can see, and uh, jumping platform and stuff. Uh, not the fastest game on the arcade systems uh, that I've ever played, um, but wasn't too bad. Uh, I found that the tune, the music, a little bit irritating. It was within keeping with the game, of course. It was very sort of... Uh, I don't know, sort of Siberian, I suppose, sort of that side of the USSR. And uh, Karnov himself reminded me very much of sort of a, a Russian strongman stroke um, sort of circus performer. But you've got a bit of white noise here. This kicks in because obviously you've gone faster. Uh, you've got sort of a speed up. There's the uh, skeletons riding the, uh, the, uh, the elusive beasts that we mentioned earlier prior to game start. Now, as you can see, it was a bright game, it played well, um, lots of different sort of enemies and stuff. But I think the problem with this game, why it passed me by, is when I had a choice of playing Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts and, and, and platformers uh, like that, this didn't really get a look in, you know, my 10 pences were, were going to be put towards the other machines, to be honest. Um, like I say, I, I was aware of the title of the game, but I'd never played it. Quite enjoyed it, didn't think it was a, a thoroughly bad game at all. I mean, it was a, it was different, I quite liked it, and uh, obviously the more power-ups you get, helps you greatly, but that's the same in most games, isn't it? Now, in um, referencing this to the Spectrum and the C64, I'm going to show two minutes of footage from both versions. We're fast approaching the end of this one. Uh, and this is going to take us up to the, uh, the end level boss here. And this is roughly two minutes uh, to destroy the boss and the end of the level for the arcade. So, we'll try and cram the rest in for the Spectrum, which is coming up next. So first up here, the Spectrum version, as you can see there, the lightning bolt bringing you into the game. Now, what impressed me about this, with it being a Spectrum game, was the, the sprites. They're very sharp, they're very clear. The graphics are actually very good for a Spectrum game. And uh, the best thing, I think, was the colour clash. By putting that big, bold black line around the figures and the characters, it actually took away the colour clash, which was always a huge problem with ZX Spectrums. Those that watch the uh, Versus videos I do know I always reference this. Uh, but this version doesn't seem to have that issue, so they've done very well with this. 
Now, the one problem I had with this game is the scrolling. I'll be honest, it scrolls not too bad when you're going left to right like that. It was all right. But as soon as you sort of jump and you're coming off from a jump or whatever, I found it was um, it was too jolty and it was like doing that 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 one two second gap thing where you get that delay and it just slowed the game down now when this come out sinclair user awarded this like a mega game they gave it nine out of ten they raved about it they absolutely loved it so in terms of uh, sinclair fans it was obviously a very very good coin op conversion um and um, I would say mainly as well that's probably something partially to do with the uh, the um, color clash but interestingly although at first the um the scrolling especially when you jump up and down was very irritating you actually start to get used to it and you don't really notice it too much um so it's not as bad as i initially thought um i've skipped a little bit of the the, the middle section of this level because i wanted to see the end of level boss which we have coming up here and uh, we'll show you the same for the commodore 64 version this version played a lot slower than the arcade um but hey, I think that's only fair, and I mean, let's be honest, the arcade systems were one off. But there you go, C64 next. So, if you're anything like me, the first observation you have made here is Rob's made a mistake. OG oh, Duffy's got an error here. He's showing the ZX Spectrum version again. Oh, no, I'm not, and trust me, I double checked. This is the C64 version. I can only describe this as absolutely lazy programming. I can only assume the guys that did this from the Spectrum just ported the Specky version straight onto the C64. I mean, it it's so similar. The sounds are the same. The scrolling is the same. The graphics are the same. This is, uh, I mean, let's be honest, right? I'm a Spectrum fan and a Commodore fan. But the SID chip... It's amazing, and they've made no use of it here whatsoever. Now, there's a couple of things here that also did not help this game at all. I mean, this is... They've just taken a direct port of the Specky. It's... I don't feel I've ever witnessed anything like this before. If I've missed something, let me know in the comments. Tell me something. If you know something about the, the story behind the programming of this or whatever, do please let me know what happened here. Okay, because I ain't got a clue. I'm completely clueless. Now, interestingly, Zap64, the go-to C64 magazine of the day, gave this a shocking 13%. And I think the reason being is because it was so similar to the Spectrum. And obviously, back in the day... Our, uh, our competition on the playgrounds was Spectrum versus Commodore. So you can imagine, this was a right... Um, oh, this If you're a, a Commodore fan, this was not good for you. Because this was saying that this was the best version. But to put salt into the wound, they only went and did this. If you look at the cover of Karnov, magazine, uh, Karnov uh, cover of the game there, it actually says... The most accurate conversion of an arcade hit in years. Yours, Sinclair. Put that on the cover. Shocking. Wow. What can I say to that? Right. Faults. Okay. It's verdict time. So before I give you that verdict, if you don't already do so, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell as well so you get them notifications. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Always good so you know when I upload new content, which is typically once a week, sometimes twice if I'm feeling, you know, feel, feeling up to it. Uh, and uh, so the verdict. Here we go. Now, before I get right into this, as always, if your system doesn't get the verdict that you want, do not hate on the video, but let me know in the comments. Also, if you've got any further suggestions for other games I should do video game comparisons against, let me know, because I've taken on board so far some great suggestions from you guys, and I've got a couple in the pipeline. So thanks for that, okay? So, here we go. ZX Spectrum version. Now, as a conversion, this, right, as ZX Spectrums go, graphically, was very, very good. Also, the colour clash really was controlled brilliantly on this version by having, like, that thick, bold border around the character. Worked really, really well. Now, we come to the scrolling. This was a letdown. Uh, and obviously we do know that the Spectrum had its limitations with scrolling games. But strangely, when I started playing this, after a short while, I got used to the scrolling. And I started to look past it. So 
initially it was a bit ropey, but then I thought, actually, you know what? I, I stopped noticing it. So that was a positive. So very well done, Spectrum. Now, also, the sound. It was your typical bleeps, blurbs, and all that from a Spectrum. No music, nothing um, fancy, but it did the job. Now, Commodore 64. Basically, you guys got a, co uh, got a Spectrum port of exactly the same game. I've never played a game like this where they're both so similar. It was, it was just madness. And I had to double check that I was playing the correct version. Um, I mean, Commodore, let's be honest, you guys. Commodore, the SID chip, the sound chip for the Commodore is just spectacular. And I always rave about it. For the time, it was brilliant. But they made no use of this at all. I can only assume that this game, I think, come out late in the year, probably getting rushed it out for Christmas or something, and they thought, hey, Chris, uh, office Christmas party end of the week. Well, I'll just pull it over and we'll just go on the, go on the beer. And I think that's what they did. I think they just took a copped out on this and, uh, and gave up very, very quickly. So, what can I say? So the winner is... Nobody. It's a draw because they're both exactly the bloody same. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comments. And also, remember, subscribe to the channel. Now, if you've got any suggestions about other games I should do versus videos on, let me know again in the comments. And also, if you haven't already done so, do check out my game hunting videos and all that sort of stuff because I do run competitions on there. So, you know, check the dates and that on the, on the, um, on the descriptions of the videos and get over there. You might win yourself a retro video game, all right? Anyway, I've been OG Duffy. Look after yourselves and... Uh, Stay safe, people, and thanks for watching. I'll see you again real, real soon. Cheers. If you watch the video and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe for more great videos. Thanks for watching.